Hey everybody, I'm Sin. Welcome to the Book Nook. Today we're gonna talk about a book called The Blueskin Gods. Oh, that's that's real shiny. Okay, there we go. Blueskin Gods by S.J. Sindhu. So this book, I read it and it was super, super good. I really enjoyed it. Another one that was good. Yes. I'm trying to get better at keeping these up on the screen. I am sometimes bad about that, so. There it is. And it's funny because when, when I point, it's the opposite way of which it looks when I look at the camera. That's the thing. No. All right, so this book, Blue Skin Gods by S.J. Sindhu. Fantastic read. And the premise of the book, it takes place in, I'm so, f sorry, I'm so fidgety today. I don't, I don't know what my deal is. Anywho. So it takes place in Tamil Nadu, India. A boy is born with blue skin. His father basically builds an ashram and the family makes a living off the people who come to seek his blessings and miracles. They think that he is the 10th incarnation of Vishnu, especially because the blue skin. It follows the story of this boy and his family, his life growing up from being a kid to the teenage years to growing up and becoming an adult. And so when it starts out, as he's growing up, he gets to his 10th birthday. And on his 10th birthday, he has three trials that he now needs to pass to prove that he is this incarnation of the god Vishnu. And the three trials are, one is to heal a very sick person. The other one is to call down horses from the heavens or you know just to make horses appear where they live apparently because you know, they're not going to come out of the sky and they never quite say what the third trial is but they kind of do it's more of a i feel like it was loosely interpreted what the, the third trial was for him to do that had to do with some like healing stuff and so he seems to pass these but he he questions it Kalki Sami is the boy's name, and he questions this, and that kind of comes into the whole theme of this book, you know, the people's faith in him, his belief in himself, how the family interacts with him, his relationship with his father, his mother, his, uh, his aunt and uncle, his cousin, who's like his best friend in the world. So yeah, it, it follows him as he grows up. And all these relationships in his life and and the whole thing of like questioning you know and believing in yourself like him thinking am am i really a god did i really heal these people is it me is it a hymen's sometimes the cat meows earlier he walked by and his his little tail was in the, the frame and i was like mm. I don't remember what I'm saying anymore. So yeah, he questions everything. And it, it follows his life and his relationship and his, uh, just his, his family, uh, his father is kind of, um, how do I put it nicely? An a-hole. <laughs> and so that doesn't help matters with him questioning, you know, himself and his life and what he's been doing his whole life and what he's been raised to be to people and to do. It follows that, and then it follows like how his family at some point just starts to to fall apart. His family starts to break apart, basically. His aunt and uncle they end up moving to America and taking away his best friend, who is his cousin, Laksh. I don't know how to say the name, Lakshman, Lakshman, Lakshman. Oh. So they move away, and that really just he's so sad about that, and. It's it's a book about finding yourself, finding your identity, and they talk about how the gods also had a female form. They would like switch between male and female, and they talk and touch on transgender in this book too. Um, it's it's good to see that representation, and it's good to have it in a light where it's accepted. But yeah, this book ties in a lot of really true to life themes. You know, I, I you know. Obviously, you and I, we didn't grow up thinking we were a god, but we grow up and we question our lives, the paths we're on. What, what am I doing? Where is my future heading? Where are we now? 
where's my trajectory? Like, it's it's a great book. I I can't say I've ever read a book that took place in India before, to be honest. This is the way I choose books. So I like to go to the library. And when I go to the library, this is how I choose a book. It's kind of random. So I go, I always go to the new section first. And I go and I look at all the titles. And if a title's name grabs me, I pick it up. And I'm like, okay, so let's read the cover. Read the cover, story synopsis. If it sounds interesting, I'm like, all right. So then I'll read, I'll read the first page. And if it gets me there, then I, I take that book with me and I read it. And that's how I choose a book. That's, uh, that's how I've done it for years. And then also, you know, obviously if someone has recommended something that sounds good and I see the title, I'll pick that up. But yeah, that's how I choose it. And that's how I found this book. And what a freaking fantastic read. I loved it. I love the story. I especially, I mean, there's the family relationship, his like relationship with his father, his mother who he loves, his cousin who was his best friend, falling in love and then exploring your sexuality and just all these different themes. Cat meowing. Cat meow! Hello? <laughs> Men, stop meowing! But this book was absolutely fantastic and I highly recommend it. I don't, it looks like S.J. Sandu has written another book called Marriage of a Thousand Lies. I don't know how many other books she has. You wanna see her picture? There she is. That is S.J. Sandu. Let's see, what does it say? Author of the novel Marriage of a Thousand Lies which won the Publishing Triangle Edmund White Debut Fiction Award, was a finalist for the Lambda Literary Award, and was an ALA Stonewall Honor Book, as well as the hybrid fiction and nonfiction chapbook, I Once Met You, But You Were Dead. I like that title, I Once Met You, But You Were Dead. So great book. I really liked it. If you want something that uh, has themes that are true to life and just was a really good story that you really uh you really felt for these characters and what can i say fantastic once again thank you for joining me in the book nook and until next time read a book that i always try to do this at the end to think of something clever and nothing comes out of my mouth until next time we'll see you later bye